Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Naming and Measuring Angles. This is part one. So what we first want to do is teach you and understand how to name an angle. So we write the, the name of the angle down. We all know what we're talking about. And secondly, we're now we're going to start to talk about how to measure angles. So first, let me talk about the measure, measurement part first. Remember, we want to measure an angle. We want to find out how open the angle is or how closed it is. That is what the measure of an angle is. And if you open it all the way up 360 degrees, that's a full circle. Anything less than that is going to be less than 360 degrees. We talked about that. We talked about right angles, acute angles, and obtuse angles. Now to measure angles, we're going to use this thing called a protractor. And you might have one of these. If not, you probably should get one. But I'm going to draw my protractors out so you can kind of see. Before we do that, though, let me just draw a general angle here. So we know that this angle is going to be bigger than zero degrees. If this ray were all the way down here on top, it would be not open at all. It would be zero degrees. This is 90 degrees, and then here is bigger than 90 degrees. Now, in order to measure it, you take this device, and there's a, usually a hole or a notch in the center, and you put it where the, the two rays come together, you put that kind of right in the hole, and then you line up one of the rays with the device here. And then what you do is you look at where the other ray kind of cuts into it and you, you read the measurement right off of the protractor. This is called a protractor. So you put the, the where they come together, which is called the vertex, where they come together, by the way, in the center, line up one of the rays like this, and then you just read the measurement right off. Now, it's really, really hard to read this protractor. Um, because it's it's so small. So what I've done over here is I've redrawn the protractor for it so we can all be on the same page. So now what we're going to do, now that you know what we're kind of doing, is we're going to take a look at an angle and we're going to measure it. Here is an angle. I have now labeled it uh, where the B, there's a letter B in the center, we call it the vertex, and then we have the letter C at this dot and the letter A here. So here's how we're going to name an angle. We're going to say the angle measure is equal to something. We're going to write it down. So what you first do is you write this little symbol here, this little, this little angle looking thing with a kind of like a curve through it. This symbol means angle. That's what it means. It means angle. So this symbol means angle, uh, an angle which name will follow. And the name of this angle is called angle A, B, C. Why is it called A, B, C? Because notice it follows. A is here, B is at the vertex in the center, and C is way over here. That's the way you want to name the angle. You could name it backwards if you want. It could be named A, B, C. It could also be named angle C, B, A. Either order is okay, but you have to make sure that the letter B is in the center because B is where the rays come together. It has to be in the center. So here we're going to call this angle A, B, C. And of course, you could say CBA if you want to, but we're going to call it ABC. And now we have to come up with a measurement. Now we know that this, uh, if if this were ray, this right here, and then we had this, if the, this one were over here, it would be a 90 degree angle, be a right angle. But it's not. So let's put a protractor on top, and that's what we have down here. We have the exact same angle. Notice A, B, and C are here. Now we put a protractor on top. What we want to do is measure how open it is from this ray all the way to here. Notice that if we go straight up from here, then you can see a 90 degree marking. It might be hard for you to read here, but this says 90 degrees straight up and down. And then all of the numbers bigger, this is 100 degrees, 110 degrees, and so on. I want you to ignore for now, ignore these outer numbers, only look at the blue numbers here. We know that the angle measure has to be bigger than 180. Because remember, a right angle is 90 degrees, but this is larger than that. It's more open, so it has to be an angle measure bigger than 90. So all you have to do is look where this thing cuts, and you have a choice. Is it going to be 20 degrees, or is it going to be 160? It has to be 160, because we know that it has to be bigger than 90 degrees right here. So we say that the measure of angle ABC is equal to 160, and you put a little degree mark here. This symbol means degrees. Now you might say, why do we have two scales here? Okay, The reason is because if we're measuring this angle here, we're going to pick the big number, 60 degrees. That's this number. But if we have this angle here, and instead we're measuring from this angle down to, to this horizontal line here, that's 20 degrees. So you basically want to ignore the 20 because we're always interested in the angle between the rays. So basically, you know straight up and down is 90. Smaller angles have numbers smaller than 90. They're acute. 
Larger angles have angle measures bigger than 90, they have to be obtuse. So when you look at the ray, you have to choose the correct number, and we know it has to be 160 because it has to be bigger than 90 degrees. Okay? All right, next. Here we have an angle. We have J, K at the vertex, and L. So we're going to name this guy angle, that's the angle symbol, J, K, L. We have to make sure K is in the center because it's at the vertex and it's in the center between those points. So we're gonna call that J, K, L, and now we have to measure this. So here we have J, K, L again, and we wanna measure how open the angle is. See, from this ray straight up, it would be 90, but this has to be bigger than 90 because it's more open than that. So our choices are 50 or 130. What does the angle measure have to be? It has to be bigger than 90, so it's 130 degrees. 130 degrees. 130 degrees. You can ignore the 50. The 50 is here if you were measuring this down, uh, down to this spot here. That would be a 50 degree measure but we're not measuring that, we're measuring the big angle. We know it has to be bigger than, than 90 degrees, so it's 130 degrees. All right, problem number three. We're gonna measure this angle. How do we write it down? Q has to be in the center, so we put our angle measure P, Q, R. P, Q, R. And now what is the angle measure itself gonna be? Let's take this angle and let's put a protractor on top of it. We're measuring how open this angle is. Now this is 90 degrees. So this is way less than 90, so we have to choose between 40 degrees or 140 degrees. And we know the angle measure has to be less than 90 because it's acute, so the answer has to be 40 degrees. 40 degrees. Now you might say, well, what are these other numbers for? That is if I was measuring this ray, the angle from it all the way over here, that is the angle measure called 140 degrees from here to here, but we're not measuring that. We know the angle has to be a small number because it's acute. It has to be less than 90 degrees. All right, let's take a look at this uh, angle here. We have Y at the vertex, that's at the center. X and Z are on the other side. So we're gonna call this angle X, Y, Z, Y has to be in the middle. Remember, we could call it Z, Y, X if we want, but we have to have Y in the center. We're gonna call it angle X, Y, Z. What is the measurement of this angle? Let's take a look down here. It's lined up on the protractor, and you can see this is horizontal, and this one cuts right through 90 degrees. In fact, both numbers say 90, so the angle measure here is exactly 90 degrees. Now, because we now know from the protractor it's exactly 90 degrees, if we wanted to, we could come over here and put that little square in the corner because that tells me, uh, that tells the reader that that angle measure is exactly 90. We didn't know that ahead of time until we measured it, but now we do, so we can add it if we want to. Now, notice that both numbers say 90. That means the angle measure this way is 90, and it also means the angle this way to the horizontal is also 90 because you've kind of taken this and cut it straight in half. So this is 90, and then this is 90. That's why the numbers are exactly the same. All right, let's take a look at problem five. What angle do we have here? We have F in the middle. We're gonna call it G, F, E. We're gonna call it G, uh, well, G, F, E, or you can call it E, F, G. Let's do it that way just to have some variety. We'll call it angle, angle E, F, G. The only thing is you have to have F in the middle because that's at the vertex, at the point there. What is that uh, angle measure? Here we have a protractor. This is the horizontal. We wanna measure this angle between these two rays. We know that this is 90 degrees, so this angle measure must be smaller because it's more closed. So we read the two numbers. Is it 70 or is it 110? It has to be less than 90, so it has to be an answer of 70 degrees. It doesn't matter if the angle opens this way or opens this way or opens this way, all we care about is the kind of how spread those, those rays are. That's all we care about. And we know that when they're spread exactly up and down like this, it's 90, so this number has to be less than 90. That's why we pick the 70 degree measurement. And finally, we have this angle measure. What do we have here? We could call it TUV or we could call it VUT. Either way is fine, so we'll call it angle TUV, angle measure TUV. What is the measurement here? We read here, this is the measurement between this ray and then this one. Now we know straight up and down would be 90. This is bigger than 90 because it's more open, so we choose between 100 or 80, and so it has to be bigger than 90, so we're gonna say it's 
an angle measure of 100 degrees, which is slightly bigger than 90 degrees. So in this lesson, we have learned how to name angles. We also snuck a little bit of, of learning about what a vertex is. The point here, the vertex here is U. The point here, the vertex here is Y. Anytime you have a, an angle formed, the point there in between the rays, that's called the vertex of the angle, right? That's a word that we're gonna use more and more as we go on here. And we learned how to name these things. And then we learned how to use the protractor and we learned how to read the correct number off. We know that this is open bigger than 90, so we have to pick the 100 degree number. What does the other number mean? The 80 degree number, that is if we were measuring from here down this way. This is smaller than 90 degrees, so it's 80. But the number that we care about is between the rays, so we have to know if it's acute or obtuse. That's why we learned what acute angles were and obtuse angles were in the beginning. So make sure you can do this. Practice yourself. Follow me on to part two. We'll get a little more practice.